Hello there dear viewers and commenters, this is Robert Devault and today I'm going to give you a special in-depth look of how I make each of my videos for you guys. So let's get started. First of all I want to say that I'm so thankful for you guys. As you can see I already have 52 subscribers so I just passed 50 and I'm really happy now because you know it's, it's kind of a milestone for me and uh, it, it's kind of rewarding you know. If I make a video and I see that you people like it and watch it a lot, then uh, it makes me feel happy, you know. And uh, I also get a lot of views. And I just want to thank you guys for uh, supporting me and everything with your nice comments as well. And if you watch some or most of my videos, you know that I never put a subscribe button or a annotation at the end of my videos. Because I don't want to earn subscribers that just subscribe to me because there's an annotation. I want to earn subscribers because they really like my videos and they know by themselves they don't they don't need a reminder to subscribe if they, if they feel that they have to subscribe then it means that they really like my videos and that those are the subscribers that mean the most to me the subscribers that also come back and comment on my videos regularly I also want to mention that my computer language is in Dutch so you will probably not understand what is on the screen so I will say what to do to make my videos I use these two programs Sony Vegas Pro 11 and Photoshop CS6 and as much as I would like to begin with Vegas Pro or Photoshop, we first need to make a blue screen. In a few minutes you'll see why. To make the blue screen, we use Microsoft Paint, which is built in into every Windows-based computer. You can use GIMP or any other image editing program as well, but I found Paint to be the easiest solution. To get the most accurate possible blue screen, we open Vegas. Now for the people who don't know what a blue screen or a green screen is, I'll explain that in a second. What you'll need to do is go up to File, click on it, go to Import, and Media. Here just go to the location, you have your videos, and open one. It really doesn't matter which one, it won't make a difference anyhow. For this example I will open my Skepta Dare to Dream video, but really you can use any video you have. Once you click open, it will appear in this little box under the Project Media tab. Just grab it with your mouse and drag it over the timeline. Here you can see that there are two tracks. The track on the top is the video track, and the track on the bottom is the audio track. Now make sure that the video track is selected. Click on the tab Video Effects and choose Blue Screen. Drag it over to the video track and here you go. Here is the perfect color sample. You remember I said I'll explain what blue and green screen is in a second? Well I think now is the time. What blue screen does is that if you ha apply the blue screen effect to a picture or video that has blue color in it, then the blue in the picture or video just disappears. You can also replace all the blue in the picture with another picture or video. It's not only blue or green, you can do this with any color in the whole color spectrum. But you still don't really see the purpose, so let's move on. But right now you don't have to do anything with your video editing program, you just open it for sampling only. So what you need to do is press print screen. You will not see anything special happening, but it did the job. Now you can close out of Sony Vegas because everything we wanted to do is now done. Now that that is done, we're going to open paint. You can generally find this under all programs, accessories, and there you will see paint on the list. Now I have it in my start menu so it is more convenient. Now that you are in paint just press Ctrl and V on your keyboard simultaneously. This will paste the image that you just took by pressing the print screen button. Now choose the sampler tool and move your cursor over to that little box that is filled with blue color and left click. You will see that the left box where my mouse is becomes blue as well. But we need to get the box on the right side blue as well so click on your sampler tool again and this time right click on the blue box. Now you'll notice that the box on the right side turns blue as well. Now you want to go to your rectangle tool, click on it, select outline, this should be solid color and the fill should be also solid color. What you want to do now is drag out a whole huge big rectangle over your whole screen. Make sure you don't leave open spaces because that will look ugly later. Double check to see if you don't have open spaces. If you don't have open spaces then you can go ahead and save the picture. Attention! If you want to make a 720p video, make sure that your blue screen is 1280 by 720 resolution. To save it, just go to the blue button, click it, click save as, and save it as a JPEG picture. Now just go ahead and give it a name to your liking, but be sure to remember where you save it. Ok, so now it seems we are pretty much done with paint. We can go ahead and start up Photoshop. Let's wait for it to load. And once it loads, you'll get a screen like this. Not like this, but like this. Now we just want to find and open our blue picture that we just saved. You go to File, Open, and browse for the picture that you just saved. I'm going to use a picture that I used for my Skepta Dare to Dream video, 
because the old picture and the picture that we just made are completely the same. Again, attention! Please organize your stuff by making different folders for them. Don't throw them all through each other because you make a mess. Don't make a mess out of your computer. Keep it organized and clean. So make a folder with the name of the song that you want to make. When you're done with your folder, take your blue screen image and copy and paste it into their new folder. And now just rename the picture to whatever you want. I use the initials of the song, so in this case it is Billie Jean. So I just rename it BJ Wallpaper. This will make it a lot more simple to save images in the future. Let's wait for the image to load. And once it's loaded, just click on the text icon there. And click on the screen. And start typing the title of the song. Okay, now you're done typing, but eh, that's still too big for me. So let's select everything and change the size on the top. Let's change it to 130. Yeah, that looks good. So now let's place it in the right place by holding down the left mouse button. Okay, but I don't really like the color. So let's select everything and let's change the color to, let's say, white or light gray rather. You can choose what color you want to color the text, but I found gray to be the most metallic looking, so I'll use that one. And now comes the most fun part, customizing. Let's go up to layers, layer style, and blending options. Well, first of all, we need some shadows, right? So click on drop shadow, and click on the text again, so you get all these menus. Here you have a lot of options to play with, I just adjust them to my liking. I zoomed in like this so you can see what's happening to the letters. I also want to point out that there is no right way of doing this. Everybody does it differently and I'm just showing you my way. Another thing that I'm using out of this list is Inner Shadow. Again, here you can play around with the settings if you want, but I'm just going to leave it that way. And now the most important thing out of this list, Bevel and Emboss. This is what gives the text the good 3D look. Here again, just play around with the settings the way you like, there is no best way of doing it is just the way you do it. There is also something I use very often, not always but often, is the second one in this list, is the cone effect it's called, and it gives the text a bit more glossy effect instead of a matte effect. Next up let's go to contour. Now this doesn't make too much of a difference but you can definitely see it if you look close enough. And the last thing on our list is satin. Now this I use very rarely but it could be handy sometimes. And now we are going to save the picture. You can do this by going up to File and Save As. Make sure that you are in the right folder and then name your picture, for instance, BJ Title, as in Billie Jean Title. But Robert, what format do I save in? Well, I found JPEG the best format to save in. It gives very good quality and it occupies very little hard disk space. Here, make sure that your quality is set to 12 because you don't want a blurry picture now, do you? And here it gives a little preview of how big the file will be. When you're done, click OK and it will save to your hard drive. Well, now you have the title and the wallpaper, but you need one more thing. The actual lyrics to the song. So, you're gonna go onto the internet and find a website that has the lyrics to the song. You just got to type in the title of the song and lyrics after it. Now there are tons of sites, you just have to find the right one. OK, well this one seems fine. Now you what you have to do is copy the first row and paste it into Photoshop. You have to align the text so that it fits perfectly. Oh no! I just noticed that all the words start with capital letters. Well, if you're unlucky like me, then you have to delete everything and search for another website. Let's try this one. Okay, this one seems good. So let's do the same thing, copy and paste. So again just take your text, align it, make it bigger or smaller according to your liking and when you're done adjusting just save it just like you save the title, give it the name 1 because this is the first line and then just do the same thing all over again with 2, with 3, with 4 and all the rest of the lines. If there is a line in a song that repeats, you only have to make one picture, because you can edit it later anyhow with video editing, why make it hard on yourself? When you're done with all the frames, you need to get the song. Now there are two options, be a good boy or girl and download the song from iTunes, or you can be a bad boy or girl and get the song for free. 
I'm using the second option for demonstrational purposes only. <laughs> so go to bmp3.com and click the first link. You will get the website and just type in the title of the music. So when you search for song on this website you will get lots of crap and basically you just have to find the right one. So make sure to listen every song to make sure that it is the correct one before downloading. As you can see I just found the correct one. Make sure that the sound quality is good and check if it is a remix or the original one. Also make sure that the ending is correct because sometimes they just cut it off. And when you are absolutely sure that you have the right one, just right click the link and select save file as. Just type in the name of the song and click on save. Now I have terrible internet connection but if you have a good one or even just a decent one then this song or any song for that matter will come down in 2 seconds or less. Ok so now you have your sound file and your frames but now you need a wallpaper. And for that we'll go to a website called Free Worship Backgrounds. The URL is worshipbackgroundsforfree.com and I'm not promoting this site in any way, but actually this is a really good website. They upload videos every once in a while, I'd say two times a week or so, and sign up is completely for free. So it just takes a few minutes to sign up and you're good to go. You can have that as many downloads as you want and it's all 1080p great quality backgrounds. So once you're signed up and good to go, just go to the top bar, choose backgrounds, and from this list I usually use abstract, light and particles. This time I clicked on abstract, so I actually like the first one. So let's see if it's a loop. If it is a loop, it means that the end and the beginning match. So if you put them after each other, then they will transition into each other. You'll see later what I mean when I'm editing the video. So if you want to download it, just click the background details and download links. And here select WMV. This will work with most video editors as you can see down below. When you are done hesitating just click the big download button and exit out of this window and the file will download to your hard drive. Now again I have a bad internet connection but if you have a decent one then any file will come down in a matter of seconds. So now let's go on to video editing, yay! But before I open up a new window of Sony Vegas you might be wondering, well I have one already in my tray, so why do I open a new one? Well, actually the one in my tray is the video that you're viewing right now. So I will play a fragment now. This is BJ title, as in Billie Jean title. But Robert, what format do I save in? Just do the same thing all over again with, with two backgrounds for free.com. And I'm not promoting this site in any way, but... So yeah, as you can see that's the video that you are watching right now. That is why I open a new window. So first we have to import a lot of files, but after that it will be much easier when we have all the files imported. So just go to File, Import and Media. So first I import my intro. Now an intro is not really necessary, but if you have one then import it. Drag it over to the timeline and you're already done with it, so it's that easy. Next import all your image files that you made with Photoshop. Now it's easy to select them all by pressing Ctrl and A simultaneously. Now all your image files will appear under the project media tab. Next I import my outro. Now if you have one it's good, if you don't have one it's no problem actually. Another necessary thing is the background. And last but not least the music itself. Next I also import my HD logo in the bottom right corner, but this is optional as well. Now drag your song over to the timeline. I use a different track to avoid confusion. I place the song in a way that it overlaps with the intro, this makes for a smoother transition. Now place the title on the timeline, now click on the video track of the intro and press U. This will ungroup your video from your audio so you can move it around freely. Now position your title in a way that it overlaps the intro. This will make for a great transition. Now just adjust the length of the title as much as needed. An easy way to do this is to pause the video at the exact moment when your first line of speech starts and then just adjust the length of the title accordingly. Yes. 
and just drag the first line of speech onto the timeline. Now as much as I tried to fit this tutorial into 15 minutes and 30 seconds, I didn't succeed, so click on the link on the screen now to see part 2, which will be significantly shorter than this one. Thank you for watching.